Hello, my name is Peter Cox. I'm a security consultant specializing in voice over IP. Voice over IP, or VoIP, has been attracting a lot of attention recently, and there are several reasons for this. Firstly, VoIP seeks to deliver many business benefits, for example, integrating our voice and data communications. Secondly, voice over IP breaks the reliance we've had on the standard telephone system. And thirdly, voice over IP provides much more flexibility in things like moves and changes. Now, there are many different voice over IP protocols. One of the most important, and the one emerging as the standard, is called the Session Initiation Protocol, or SIP. SIP is important for a number of reasons. Firstly, it delivers a lot more than just voice. It can deliver video conferencing, instant messaging, and so-called presence-based applications. Presence applications provide things like intelligent call routing. For example, if someone is in a meeting, the call can be forwarded to their voicemail. Now, SIP, in common with all other VoIP applications, of course, runs over an IP network and may even run on the internet. And as such, SIP and the applications that it drives are open to a range of attacks and threats. These threats and vulnerabilities can be broken into three areas. Firstly, there are a set of IP level threats. Uh, these threats are shared with applications such as web and email and are familiar to many of us. But secondly, there are a range of protocol and application specific threats. Threats which stem from the way in which the SIP protocol is designed and the way it's implemented. These threats, for example, can misdirect calls, can terminate calls, and cause a lot of disruption to a VoIP system. And thirdly, there are a set of content-related threats. Content-related threats interfere with what's called the media stream, which is the voice call or video conference. Probably the single most serious category of threat that faces a voice over IP system is an application-level flood attack. One example of this attack is a call flooding attack. To illustrate this attack, we'll run a very, very simple script, and make a few calls um, to an extension, and we'll hear that extension ring. The phone rings, we answer it, and the caller hangs up. If we run the script again, this time making more than a single call, we can see how serious the impact of this attack is. The phone keeps ringing, the attacker hangs up, and it rings again. This effectively makes our phone unusable. Sooner or later, we give up and leave the phone off hook or disconnect it. Imagine how serious an attack of this kind would be against a business like a call center. The phone system is effectively unusable. We can't make any outbound calls because the phone keeps ringing. We can't receive any inbound calls because the phone's either busy or indeed we've left it off hook. Faced with an attack of this kind, an operation like a call center would quickly go out of business and the impact on other styles of businesses will be equally serious. An attacker can find ways of exploiting the techniques we've just seen. Imagine what would happen if rather than calling and hanging up, an attacker were actually to play some content, for example, an advertising message. For this next demonstration, we'll run such an attack, we'll choose a target extension, and select a simple audio file to play. What we've just demonstrated is effectively VoIP spam. This attack used many of the techniques that email spammers have exploited for many years. We all know how intrusive email spam is, how much of a nuisance it is to have to wade through your email inbox and delete the ones you don't want. Imagine how much worse the impact is of receiving 100 such calls, or even having to go through 100 voicemail messages of that kind. For this next demo, we're going to show how an attacker can misuse the SIP protocol to disrupt calls. In this case, we're going to run a very simple script that listens into the network traffic. This is actually very easy to do. Indeed, there are many freely available tools on the internet for monitoring network traffic. As soon as this script detects a call, it will start a countdown, and at the end of the countdown, it will send a SIP request 
to terminate this call. Good morning, Borderware. Hi, Heidi, it's Peter. I'm just returning your call. As we have just seen, the attack script terminated the call. If we look closely, almost none of the information sent matched the caller or the call recipient. This shows, however, how easy it is to disrupt calls in this way. Imagine the impact on your business if calls made to or received by key staff could be terminated this easily. The attacks we've seen so far have been very obvious. The victim will know they're under attack. This next demonstration is much more subtle. This demonstration relies on the fact that VoIP phones must frequently register with their IPPBX. Now, the IPPBX is the equivalent of your office phone system. It handles all the calls, routing a call to the appropriate phone. By registering, phones tell the VoIP system that they're able to receive calls. We are going to misuse the registration process to trick the IPPBX into thinking that an extension has been disconnected or turned off. For this demonstration, we'll first make a simple call. We'll call one extension from the other to show that the calls are being routed correctly. Now we'll run a script which tells the PBX that one of the extensions, the one we've just called, has been disconnected. Imagine the impact on your business if an attacker were able to deregister phones at will. None of your staff would receive incoming calls, and they may not even be aware of the problem. At best, all incoming calls will be directed to voicemail, and at worst, your customers will be unable to contact you. Finally, let's take a look at the issue of call monitoring. It is, of course, possible to tap into calls on the standard phone network, but it's far from easy. Even if you're the police, you need a court order, and you need access to carefully controlled telco networks. Moving our calls to the internet changes all of this. There are many freely available tools for monitoring network traffic, but a smart attacker wouldn't use those. A smart attacker would use a custom-designed utility, maybe designed as a worm or a virus that would infect someone's PC, and listen in to all of their phone calls. Such a utility would index those calls by caller, time of date, and maybe even provide a web interface to review and play back those calls. Effectively, we have point-and-click wiretapping from anywhere on the internet. Let's take a look at an example application. Now, first, I'll retry that call to the office. Hello, Heidi. I'm returning your call again. We were cut off earlier. Oh, I think the 320 is fine. Thanks very much. Bye. Now, let's switch to a web browser and see if we can locate that call. If we look at the entries for today, June the 7th, we'll see we have a single call. The date of the call, the caller and the call recipient are listed, and then we have a simple link. If we click on this link, we we'll download a WAV file, start Real Player, and replay both sides of that call. Good afternoon, Budaware. Hi, Heidi, it's Peter. We're returning your call. We were cut off earlier. Oh, hi, Peter. Yes, it was about the flights you'd asked me to change next week. You'd asked me to book you on the 220. Unfortunately, that flight was fully booked, so the options are 120 or 320. Oh, I think the 320 is fine, thanks. We've just seen how easy it is to monitor and record calls on the internet. Imagine the impact on your business if a confidential call from, for example, your CFO to the bank could be recorded in this way. These demonstrations have illustrated just a few of the security issues of VoIP and show how easily those vulnerabilities can be exploited to produce real attacks. Moving voice to an IP network means that attackers can use all of the tools and techniques that have been applied successfully to attacking web servers and email systems in the past. Fortunately, there are solutions. For more information on these solutions and on VoIP vulnerabilities, please feel free to contact me. My details are shown at the end of this video.